The white top and shorts were used on the victim to show the vulnerability, innocence and purity of the character. However, one major problem we faced during this was due to the time of the shoot in January and therefore in the studio it was extremely cold. Therefore, this meant that our, our actor, Ollie, was shivering and we had to use a heater in order in between shoots to heat him up. This slowed down our production time but it was also necessary to make sure Ollie was okay. Also, the colour white would clearly show the blood, emphasising his injuries. He was covered in bruises and fake blood to show the extent of his injuries and how badly he has been treated. However, one major problem with the fake blood was that we, it was incredibly sticky and therefore slowed down our filming, because one member of the crew applied the blood to the actor, and then they had to wash their hands before using the camera equipment. He also had bare feet to show his vulnerability as his feet were dirty and bruised due to walking in bare feet. This was also a problem because his feet were too cold, but using the heater we managed to heat him up in between shoots. For the serial killer we had the actor wear a dark navy bowler suit to show his artistic profession and also will indicate to the audience that he will be using media for his work that will be messy, for example the blood of the victim. This small ind indication of the artist working with blood fits in with the conventions of a thriller because it gives small hints of the killer, yet unlike a horror movie, he splattered the blood of paint to show the audience that he is using the blood of the victim and also to indicate to the audience that he is the one who kidnapped the body. The fact that he is barefoot shows the madness eccentric nature of the character and to show the audience that he feels uncomfortable, which gives the conventions of the thriller scene. In terms of props, we used a canvas to apply the blood to the painting so that the artist's artwork can be made. We had a problem with this because originally we had three A3 canvases for continuity reasons, but we thought these would be too small and unimpressive for the audience. So we instead used three already used A1 canvases, making it cheaper for us because we didn't have to buy it. We also had the paintbrushes, paint palettes, easel and water pot were used to make the killer's appearance of an artist more believable by giving him an artist's equipment. Fake blood was needed because it because the victim needs blood all over him to show how he has been using the brutality cut by the killer and is injured because of it. It is also needed because the killer needs blood to paint on with and his costume so that he shows that he has cut the victim. Without the large amounts of fake blood, the scene would seem less exciting and filler, thrilling for the audience. For our location and set design, we shooted two minute sequences in the studio and built up the set using borders to create the black walled room. Originally, we were going to use our art studio at school but felt that it was too light and open, and so it would not create the right atmosphere for our scene and would not fit with the conventions of a thriller. By using a small darkened room with a simplistic set of a table, an easel and a small stand for the artist's equipment, it meant that the room would feel small, dark, eerie and unpleasant. Because this small room would make the audience feel as if they themselves are too close to the serial killer, thrilling them in the process. We did not have any problems with building the set since we were able to set it up quickly and easily, and due to it being the studio we did not have to worry about weather conditions. However, the recurring problem was the time of year meant that the studio was extremely cold and so our actor playing the victim needed to be filmed as quickly as possible in order to keep him warm. This meant that we did all of his scenes first. For our lighting, we had a fairly dark room to fit the conventions of the filler because it would seem more mysterious and eerie. However, we wanted to still see the actor's face and have the camera pick up all the details. Therefore, we decided to have a very harsh lighting which was placed above the objects of the set, in particular the canvas and the victim's table. Also, because it was shooted from the ceiling, it made sure that the lighting wasn't too bright. For our character positioning, from the start we want to have the victim lying on the table in order to show the audience that the killer was injured so badly that he was unable to stand up. This would also make the audience feel more scared by the killer because of his sheer brutality that he would injure someone so severely. Also, to show the character's madness, we would have the actor doing odd movements such as licking his lips when looking at the dead body or rubbing the blood for his hair, which fitted the conventions of a filler because it made the audience feel uncomfortable. 
However, one problem we faced was that the actor got too involved within the malice of the character and accidentally hurt his knuckles because he hit the canvas too hard. Therefore, our direction was that he now needed to pull back on the aggressive physicality and use his face more to express the man nature of the character.